All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Noah. As you said, I'm Sam Glassenberg. Uh, Noah invited me to speak to share uh, what can be described as a Games for Change success story that has played out over the last five years. Um, we really appreciate over that entire period, Noah has been advising us um, and we've gained tremendous insight uh, from his experience. So the success story, basically I'm gonna present Level X. It's a, it's a case study of a highly successful games company built around achieving social good, built around a mission, um, a mission of advancing the practice of medicine through play. So this has been our mantra at Level X, right? Okay, what does this mission mean? Well, for one thing, it means using real game technology and deep game design to accelerate the adoption curve in medicine. Because when a better treatment or a better procedure becomes available to medical professionals, it can be years, it can be decades until it becomes what we call the standard of care. And it's not because doctors are backwards and it's not because they're Luddites or they're stubborn. They wanna deliver the best care for their patients, but they aren't given a good way to train that doesn't involve ramping up their skills by practicing on live human beings. And why is that? Um, and that it's because the modalities of continuing medical training are often bad, shockingly bad. Um, and, and this is why the need is so great. There, if there are three simple takeaways from their keynote, the first one, the need is great. Number two, profound impact is possible. Uh, with good game design and technology. And number three, there are no shortcuts. Now, not only can you have profound impact um, on society, but you can also be successful as a business, as much or more uh, successful than you might find even building a business around traditional consumer games. Now, consumer games, this is where most of us come from at Level X. Um, so at Level X, most of our 130 employees are experienced uh, video game developers and designers. Experts have worked in every genre, on Mortal Kombat, on Words with Friends, and we team them up with hundreds of physician advisors and contributors across every major specialty to capture the challenges of the practice of medicine as video games. So we're pulling from all corners of the video game designer's toolbox. Shooter mechanics to capture the challenges of surgery, puzzle mechanics to capture the cognitive challenge of rare disease diagnosis. And in service of great game design, we are pushing the limits of hardware and game engines with awesome graphics and physics tech. The kind of stuff that puts us demoing head to head uh, on stage at SIGGRAPH right, up against, you know, with, with Unity and, and Unreal and NVIDIA, tech that eventually makes its way from medical games like ours actually back into consumer games. Um, and I'll, I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about when we talk about games for doctors. Um, so I always, people who know me know that I always like to uh, start a demo off with a colonoscopy because that's the best. Uh, here you can see we have a bunch of uh, Level X games available in the app store. You can try them yourself. They're designed for doctors. We have about 750,000 medical professionals playing them in a range of different specialties. This is Gastro X. It's filled with dozens of real cases, difficult, rare cases that have been submitted by doctors around the country. Um, you can earn CME for some of them, uh, continuing medical education credit. Um, but most of them are there because they're just fun and challenging. I'm just doing this here on my phone. I do all my demos live. Um, now, this is not just like, you know, playing and exploring a 3D mesh. Uh, this game, well, this is a totally interactive virtual patient. We are surrounded by a squishy soft body environment where I can literally grab anything anywhere. As I pull it toward the light, you can see it has subsurface scattering right before I go in. And so this is, this is a routine polypectomy. I need to find all the precancerous polyps that hide behind folds. Um, this is a hidden object game. That's the mechanic. I'm trying to find these, these polyps that hide in different spots. Here I've got one that's kind of out in the open. Um, so that's a freebie. I'll come and grab it with my forceps. What I don't realize is this is a rare condition where the polyp embeds on a blood vessel. So when I remove it, oh crap, I just triggered a bleed a meter inside the body. So here we have full 3D computational fluid dynamics running on a phone, you know, that thing that drops your calls all the time. I can spray water. I have a water jet. So I can spray water to try to you see it mixes realistically. I can try to stop the bleed. All it does is dilute it. I have to take more drastic action. So I'm going to grab my argon plasma coagulator. This is a real medical device. It's just like the plasma rifle from your favorite first person shooter, only it's real. Um, and I can stop the bleed, objective achieved. 
And now that, you know, surprise loop that the game design threw me for uh, now is finished. And now I have to find another five polyps hiding in all that blood. Um, now, you don't want to watch me do that. It's a sandbox. It's a totally interactive virtual patient. Uh, we, so I can cauterize anywhere until I fail the case. Make the joke that most games feature characters inside of environments. At level X, we make environments inside of characters. Um, so that's just one example. But, you know, they're using sort of first person shooter mechanics, but there's a whole range of others. Here's an example from cardiology um, in our Cardio X game. We have a quarter of the interventional cardiologists in the country playing it. This game is a puzzle racing game played entirely under X-ray, um, where you need to figure out. Here you can see the the you can see the um, you can see the heart, you can see the the uh, the bones. I can move the X-ray around, and here are the challenges to restore blood flow to a live beating human heart. The only way to actually see where I'm going is to inject radio opaque dye, and then try to navigate it. And the whole purpose of the game is to use the right tools in the right sequence and place them in the right location to restore blood flow to the heart without causing further damage, like here where I just blocked off a blood vessel, so now the blood can't flow there. Um, so these are just different, you know, we have dozens of these examples of using real game design, real game technology uh, to advance the practice of medicine. Um, and like we said, the need for these things is great. There is a huge gap between the state of the art in entertainment and the state of the art in medical training, both in terms of technology and design. And coming from games, we're constantly realizing that the need is greater than we thought. Um, as Noah mentioned, I've spent my career in games, places like LucasArts. At Microsoft, I worked on the DirectX graphics team. Most of you probably know DirectX. My team was responsible for standardizing graphics technology across the ecosystem so games could look awesome. So, you know, so games could just ride Moore's Law. So we could go from video games that look computer generated in 2001 and then go across the uncanny valley. So today for 50 bucks, I can buy Call of Duty, amazing characters and graphics. I can zoom into the eye of one of the characters. This is what it looks like. You might've seen this from Activision uh, a few years back. This is the level of detail that we're modeling an eye in a, modern, in a modern video game. Now let's sit down in front of a $250,000 state-of-the-art eye surgery simulator. This is what it looks like. How about those graphics? What is this, 1991? Like this looks like it fell out of a gumball machine. And not only is it not visually realistic, but it can't capture the rare and challenging complications that only occur in real eye surgery. Oh, and this, this simulator here, it's stuck in an $80 million training center. There's only like 200 of these in the entire United States. It's, they're inaccessible to 90% of doctors um, that aren't at an academic training center. Now we're very familiar with this, with this distribution model in the games industry, because, well, we abandoned it 30 years ago. Nobody plays games at the arcade anymore. They always play on our phones. And so at Level X, we're a team of video game developers. And as we learn more and more about the cutting edge of medical training, we're consistently shocked and dismayed at how doctors have to train. Now, there's one exception to this. There was one time when we found a simulator as game developers, that a, a training tool that really impressed us. And the story of this discovery at Level X, we call this story uh, the pig in the box. Um, so I just showed you GastroX. Uh, so if you're trying to bring a bunch of people, you know, learn about the games industry, what do you do? You send them, you send them to GDC. If you want to send a bunch of game developers to learn about gastroenterology because they're about to make a gastro app, a gastro game, what we do is we send them to the gastroenterology conference to just walk the show floor, get a sense of what the doctors are interested in and where people are challenged. It's like GDC, except, you know, replace Autodesk with Pfizer and replace the latest Nintendo controller with the argon plasma coagulator, which you just saw a second ago. And doctors told us, gastroenterologists, before we made the game, whatever you do, you have to feature the argon plasma coagulator because it's just awesome. Uh, so one of our game developers, Andy, uh, starts searching the show floor to try to find a company that makes the argon plasma coagulator so we can check it out. Uh, and he finds one. And what's more impressive than the device itself, which is super cool, is the device they're using to, the, the simulator that they're using to train it. So, okay, it basically, it's a box. It looks basically like a PlayStation, except the controller is the actual colonoscope. And what's even more impressive is as you navigate the controller, you get this ultra realistic rendering of the inside of the colon. Now there's no blood, blood is really hard to simulate, but the tissue moves so realistically. And every time they cauterize, you can see the smoke billowing. Andy goes nuts. He's never seen a, a medical tool, like a medical trainer like this. So he goes, hey, uh, he asked the guy, like, what is the, is this on Unity? Is this unreal? What's the engine behind this? Bombarding the, 
the poor sales rep with questions he can't answer. And he keeps asking him, asking him. Finally, after five minutes, they bring over uh, one of the engineers from the device company who says, talks to Andy, he goes, wait a minute, Andy, you realize that's, that's not a simulator. There's a, you realize there's a pig in the box, right? Three days before, right before the show, we take a slaughtered pig, we cut out its intestines and we sew it into the inside of the box. It's only good for three days and it starts to smell. We gotta get a new one. So remember, you're a video game developer. You spent your career making video games. It's 2018 and there's a pig in the box, right? We're down, in the video games industry, we've solved this problem 10 years ago. We wouldn't have even have thought of putting a pig in the box. Every story we have at Level X follows the same arc. You have this ha-ha moment of hilarity when you discover, ha-ha, I can't believe that it's a pig in the box. It's followed by a moment of dread when you realize, wait a minute, this is an argon plasma coagulator. We use it because we accidentally nick a blood vessel deep in the body. We need to quickly cauterize it and deal with that bleed. But the dead pig intestines don't bleed. So the first time a surgeon ever actually uses this on a bleed, it's going to be on a live human being. And that's the moment where the game developer realizes the importance and the impact of what we're doing. This stuff is really important. And if you solve these problems, you can have real impact. And you can do it quickly. When COVID hit last year, demand from our medical professional players was overwhelming. We had patients that were dying in ERs in New York because when you have to assume that everybody coming in with a lung condition has COVID, patients who actually show up with a pulmonary embolism, they're very likely to be misdiagnosed. So what we did was we took a reductive reasoning diagnosis puzzle mechanic that we had originally developed for cardiology. And we quickly launched levels in our pulmonology game to teach doctors and other medical professionals how to differentiate between COVID and diseases that present like COVID. Um, another major challenge that our frontline medical professionals were facing, getting somebody on a ventilator isn't just a matter of shoving a tube down their throat and flipping a switch. Managing their airway, that's a complex strategy game with a lot of trade-offs. Luckily, we had already built a strategy game for this with the American Society of Anesthesiologists. Now, the rules for this all changed with COVID. If you were a doctor and you followed the standard airway guidelines on a COVID patient, you were likely to damage their airway further and aerosolize the virus, putting everybody in the room at risk. So we're a game and we updated our game rules. First, we updated them with a bunch of guidelines in Italian that we had gotten from the Italian medical societies because they were dealing with it first. And then we updated our game a few weeks later with updated guidelines from the CDC and the ASA when they caught up. And I'm happy to demo this during Q&A later if we want to check it out. Um, another important issue from the past year where recent events have really brought to light long-standing racial inequalities in our society. And unfortunately, healthcare is, is not an exception to that. So just one example, dermatology. It's been long known that people of color do not get the same quality of care when they go to the dermatologist. They are more likely to be misdiagnosed, especially if they have a rare disease. Why? It's not out of malice on the part of the doctor. The doctor simply hasn't seen enough cases of your skin condition on your skin tone to recognize it, right? It's not, it's not his fault. He just doesn't see enough patients of color. And the literature, the reference material, there is a total dearth of reference images of many skin diseases on skin of color. Games can solve this problem. So at Level X, our artists and our engineers built upon the best skin rendering tech that already existed in the games industry. And we created on top of that, a pipeline that can generate any skin disease on skin of any color. And then we built a game using proven brain training mechanics to feed all of this content into. So dermatologists can now train their brain to recognize these diseases on patients that they might not see every day. And all of this stuff that we're making, it's all, the beauty is it's all, it's free to play. It's all free to doctors. Like many mobile games, we make money from sponsorship. Um, only our sponsors are the folks with the latest medical technologies and treatments. Companies like Medtronic and Baxter and Philips. These are treatments and tools that the doctors want to learn how to use, just not through practicing on their live patients. 
Um, and one of these sponsors actually ended up acquiring Level X last year, marking the first time that a video game studio was acquired by a major health technology company. This is the first time, but hope, but and hopefully the first of many, many, many more. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, uh, we're also working with NASA um, to use all of this uh, technology and game mechanics to train astronauts for medical emergencies on deep space missions uh, that are planned for later on in this decade. <clears throat> um, so getting back to the mission, what happens when we succeed in our mission here on Earth? So at Level X, we envision a world where games take their place alongside all of these other broadly accepted approaches to, to acquiring knowledge and skill in medicine, right? So just like today, there's a complex concept, oh, we should do a lecture on that. We should organize a cadaver lab. We should make an animation. Tomorrow, we should make a video game. So today, we talk about Level X making video games for doctors. And all of a sudden, you know, often that raises eyebrows. Like, what does that actually mean, video games for doctors? But we believe that five years from now, we make games for doctors, there's no surprise. Oh, games for doctors. Of course, games for doctors. Like, that's always been a thing. Just like, you know, animations for doctors or lectures for doctors, conferences for doctors, games for doctors. That's just how doctors learn now. And we actually, based on what we've been seeing, we don't actually think that that future is very far away. Um, and the only way to get there, we believe, is by using the best of game technology in service of sophisticated game design, the same way we do in consumer games. Don't drop the bar on technology. Don't go shallow on design. Don't compromise on fun. These are all shortcuts, and they do not work. I fundamentally believe that there are no shortcuts. This is the third, the third theme. And when we take shortcuts, we are doing this entire industry a disservice. What I'm saying here might be controversial, but heck, you know, keynotes aren't fun if they don't cause a little bit of controversy. Stop taking shortcuts. The only way we achieve the goal and achieve the vision is with real game design and technology and not by cutting corners. Cutting corners creates stigma. What do I mean by that? We don't even use the term serious games at level X. It's a great word, perfectly descriptive word, but we can't use it. Why? Because it's stigmatized. What comes to the average game developer's mind when they think of serious games? something with second life graphics and a user interface from 1992. Serious games have earned a reputation of not taking game design seriously. Perfectly descriptive word, great word, can't use it anymore. This is why we can't have nice things. Another term we don't use at level X, gamification. Good descriptor, can't use it. Why? Think about it. 90, think of 95% of the real world gamification examples you can imagine, like that you can think of. They fall into two categories, quizzes and badges. Taking something that isn't fun and giving you a badge for completing it, hell, we didn't, we didn't even invent badges in the games industry. We stole that crap from the Girl Scouts. Gamification, now that's stigmatized too. And we fight that stigma every day. And when we try to sell games for change, and when we try to do it without real games industry expertise, when we gamify crap by sticking a badge on it, when we care more about curriculum than we do about game design, than we do about fun, when we set 1995 as our bar for UX or for graphics, every time a team or a company does that, it hurts our reputation. It hurts the reputation of games. It hurts the reputation of games for change in the consumer games industry that we hire from. And it hurts the reputation of games overall in the industries like healthcare that can benefit from it the most. Every time we do it, it creates stigma. Every time it pushes this vision another day into the future, and a Games for Change fairy loses its wings. But if you believe in this mission and you wanna make great games that revolutionize medicine while winning games industry awards for awesome graphics and gameplay, Level X is hiring. We've created a place where you can use the latest game engine tech, art tools and game mechanics without compromise to achieve social good. But as I said, the need is great and the potential for impact and success is high. There's room for more than one player in this ecosystem. There's room for many in healthcare and beyond. Happy to talk about this further in the Q uh, in the Q and A room. There's a link in the chat. See you there, and thank you very much.